Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Star Citizen Live. I'm your host, uh, uh, oh. I was about to say my old title. I have a new title. I'm your host, Jared Huckabee. Uh, joining us on the show this week, we've got a uh, lead animator, Brian Brewer, who's uh, going to take us through a bit of his process in how he uh, solves animation data. And, well, we're going to let him talk, tell you all about it. Brian, you there? I'm here. How's it going? Good. Thank you for being on the show. This is the first time we've had you on an RTV, SL Live, Happy Hour. It's been through a couple things. But this is the first time we've had you on one of these, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually been on any of our episodes. Yeah, well, well I mean, that's intentional, but I was just speaking about <laughs> this broadcast specifically. Yes. Uh, now, Brian, you work with the animation team. You're the lead animator out of our Austin, Texas studio. Uh, why don't you, because it's been a while since anybody who watches our broadcast has seen or heard from you, why don't you take, us, take a few moments now and tell everybody who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. Hello, everybody. My name is Brian Brewer. I'm lead animator lead animator here in uh, Austin, Texas, and I have been working on the project since early 2013 when we first opened our doors in that basement way back when. Uh, I've been in charge of uh, building our motion capture system uh, from the very beginning. Uh, I have also been, as of late, taking our team here in Austin on to the into the persistent universe, mm -hmm. where we are bringing good things to life, if <laughs> or so so to speak. So to speak. Um, I want to ask yeah. you about something. JJ, can we go full screen on Brian here? What is this thing with the PVC behind you that I'm seeing on the screen? So what you're looking at behind me is actually a bar that we've built for our bars in the universe. And if I see if I can slide out of the way there. <laughs> uh, we have a full layout with uh, things that the player will be able to pick up and, or not the player, excuse me, the NPC, the bartenders will be able to pick up and use and, and, and deliver drinks to uh, other NPCs or to, um, or to players. If you go and sit at the bar and order a drink, bartender's going to come up, do a big concoction, okay. hand you a drink. Now, uh, we can't see it in this shot. You're actually in the new uh, expansion that we've added to the Austin Studio uh, this year. Uh, Austin Studio is, is building out. It's expanding. It's moving into the, it's expanding into the area next to it. And this room that you're in, uh, we can't see it again because of the camera. You actually have a motion capture rig all around this room that you're in. Oh, we do. Uh, so we decided to bring 12 of our cameras into our animation pit and set it up so that anytime we need to capture something, whether it's a small transition or we're doing some R&D and blocking out animations, we can quickly capture it, have it off to the designer so they can implement it in game. So that's just in case anybody was wondering why they had a PVC bar in the room, it's because this is this this office area where they are working, uh, you know, day to day is also a fully functional uh, motion capture studio. So yes, yes it is. I thought that was cool. All right, so what are we talking about today? Usually I introduce, but I want to, Brian, th this, this is going to be a little bit more your show than my show this week. What are we talking about today? So today we're going to look at some of the emotes we captured at CitizenCon. Uh, we did things like, um, oh, face palm, quick draw, um, but can I see you, um, cuckoo, just a, a bunch of the ones that we, we capture. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to start working my way down. I'm going to talk about motion capture, the process of motion capture. You, if you got to see at CitizenCon mm -hmm. um, what, what we did, this is kind of the, the next step in the process. We, we've taken that data, we've cleaned it, and we're going to start uh, putting it onto our character. We're going to start motion editing it. Uh, we're going to, I'm, I'm probably talking more than I probably should right now. I should probably just get in and, and uh, roll up my sleeves and uh, start working. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do right. a screen share. Let's see what you're working on. All right, you see my screen okay? Yeah, we see it. So here are a handful of uh, animations. Uh, we use Motion Builder uh, because it allows us to cycle back and forth between a bunch of animations really quickly. Mm -hmm. But let's do a quick recap. Uh, I've got some reference video over here. I don't know if you guys have seen this, if you remember seeing this. Yeah, These, no, I'm sorry, this I'm was sorry. filmed at CitizenCon, by the way. This, okay. this, was at, this was at CitizenCon. Uh, our actor on the left here is uh, David. He's also one of our senior animators here at Cloud Imperium. Uh, he's very talented, not just an animator, but he used to do stunts. He's done a ton of motion capture. Uh, he's really good to put in the suit. Uh, in fact, he, he's peppered. He's sprinkled throughout our game. So, uh, And right next to him is uh, Miss Elizabeth Maxwell. She's an actor who we hired to come in. We've worked with her. She, you can see her sprinkled throughout the game as well, doing a lot of the usables for females and what have you. 
I'm just going to hit play while I talk here. Uh, I'll explain kind of what they're doing. Uh, so this is the cuckoo. Yeah, you're, you're crazy, or this person next to me is crazy. Okay, it loops. <laughs> Making sure it looped. Um, so what they're doing is they go into a T pose, mm -hmm. uh, and this helps us calibrate our system. Uh, they go through the, they get into their their home pose, and then they do the action, and they go back to their home pose, and they add a little bit of padding onto the the front and the end of their animations, um, so that we have some some buffer, some some room to work with. Um, okay. That's really it's really key. Now the, these these uh, performances were actually directed by backers. At CitizenCon, right? They were. In fact, I don't know if I have um, them in any of the shots. I'm, I might. <laughs> it's all right. No, it's all right. It's, it's been a while since I've yeah. looked at some uh, of this. So, uh, talk to me about what is what is directing an emote do? What, 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 what is that? You just tell them be cuckoo or, or take us through that. What did they do? The director usually gives the actor some sort of motivation. Uh, are you just a normal person? Are you happy? Are you are you are you gruff and angry? Uh, what uh, are you cocky and confident? Are you you know are you a, son, a, a Han Solo or or what what kind of a person personality are you? Uh, the actor thinks about what the direction is and then they make acting choices. And the acting choices. Um, well, you see it that drives the character. You can see how both of them, both these actors who are uh, pretty much doing the same performance, have they're doing different things, uh, even though they're within the same character. Okay. Um, now I'm I'm seeing the video up top and the the, the rendering down below is is that a live capture? Is that is that what you're seeing live uh, when you're capturing it? Yes. Uh, this right down here is live. This was what was in. Um, in our uh, software called Motive. Uh, this is the capture software we use. So this was live. We come in and we've, we actually go in and we clean up any occlusion or dropped markers, swapped markers, um, that sort of thing. And when it's clean and it looks good, uh, we then export uh, a skeleton and we retarget it to our character. And I'll go ahead and I'll slide our reference video off over here. And that's what I have here. So let me, there's the T-pose. I'm just going to, I'll just go ahead and play this. Mm -hmm. So T-pose. We only have David in the scene right now, the, the male actor. I believe this is the shield eyes that we did, where he's like, oh, it's bright. I'm going to shield my eyes to see what I see up ahead. And then he goes back into T-pose. What I'll do is I start to edit. I'll come in and I'll, I'll try to find the, the key spots where I want this animation to start. So probably right about here. We want it to be a little bit snappy as we come into it. So I'll I'll crop this animation down. That's at frame 193. And then I'll usually go try to find the end. Should probably we gotta look for the settle. So I'll just let this play naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, right about there. Right about there. That is frame uh, 436. Oh, we had a we had a question in the chat. Uh, what's the purpose of the T pose? I know you mentioned it's 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 for calibration, but why a T pose above any other calibration pose? So what the T pose does? Oh, I guess what it did typically in the olden days. Um, switch back over to myself here, so I can so I can demonstrate. Back in the olden days of motion capture, uh, you would have to have the actor go into a stiff T pose because the software needed to be able to recognize, recognize the different markers on the actor's body and say, this is an arm, this is the upper arm, this is the lower arm, this is the hand, mm -hmm. chest, and so on. When the arms are down to the side, uh, a lot of times those markers can flip and get swapped for markers that may be on the hips or in the chest. So by, by kind of uh, spreading your limbs out uh, to the side, um, it, it helps the system. Uh, now nowadays it's it's not required, but it's really nice. It's it's a nice way to um, uh, just kind of keep your file clean. It also is like a good time marker, saying this is the beginning of the animation. All right, so I've got him in here, but he starts at frame one ninety three, and I need to get this to frame zero. So I'm going to go into uh, my story. I'm going to create a character animation track select my character, insert my take, get a little warning, ignore it, 
<laughs> and this is now like uh, editing in a video application like Premiere or, or one of those uh, where it's essentially just a, a take I can move around. So I'm going to knock that over to zero and frame my selection. And that is now framed my frame range from zero to 243. Now I don't have to do math in my head. I can actually just say it's 243 frames. By the way, interesting fact, we actually capture at uh, 120 frames a second. And the reason why we capture at 120 frames a second is you get a higher fidelity and less chance of markers flipping and swapping and that sort of thing. So we capture at 120 you and said then fidelity, we, I have to drink. God, continue. <laughs> um, so we capture at a high fidelity and then we uh, res it down uh, to 30 frames, which is what our game engine handles. So yeah. once that's good, I'll go ahead. That's my first pass. I'm going to plot to my skeleton. And plot back to my control rig. And this is essentially baking down that change. I can delete this. Don't need it anymore. So we have a home pose that we, our characters have to go into and out of. I don't know if you can see it because I think my, my big head is covering it up. I'll just slide this over here <laughs> like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Uh, put our, this is our player no weapon idle onto our our animation. I'm going to set a key, and this is an offset key. And he's going to be a little weird now when he, when he plays the animation. It might be a, a little bit off uh, because all the animation curves have been offset. But we're going to fix that uh, after I set my end pose. So hey, you can see that little shift hey, right, right there. I'm not, I'm not seeing what's off. Maybe I'm I'm missing it. What what what's the part that's off? Sure. You know what? In fact, I will toggle back and forth. I usually work in that split screen because that's just how I like to work, being able mm -hmm. to select my nodes easily. But I'll turn on and off. There's off. There is how he was originally captured. And here's with the pose. And I can I can actually blend back and forth between these two. Oh, okay. And this little node that you're seeing right here is a technical requirement for players. Uh, it's uh, a little bit of code works with that node in order for your the head cam in game um, to function properly and not make everybody you know seasick as they play. Right. <laughs> so that's that's what that is. I'm remembering Ivo's uh, vision <laughs> stabilization oh, from yeah. a couple years ago. All right, so now I've kind of got the poses laid in there. I'm going to go back and forth now, and I'm going to uh, start pulling back to the original motion capture. I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to start with his his uh, I think I'll start with his head. So I'm going to go to body part mode now. Before I was keying the entire body, but now I'm going to actually just start working with individual body parts. I, so uh, I, I'm I'm freaking out about this skeleton because my only animation experience personally has was in stop motion animation and the the the, the frame there the, the skeleton frame there looks quite similar to something we we would use as the basis of our claymation oh yeah figures yeah i don't know it's just making me think about it oh you know what i did <laughs> i i totally made a mistake i'm gonna have to go fix my mistake let me show you what my mistake was I actually have the wrong curve set up for, for keying. I've at the bar that you saw behind me, mm -hmm. I've been doing some blocked out animation. So I had my, my curve set up to be very specific to, to doing blocked out animation. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fix that real fast. And uh, that's probably part of the reason why you may not have been seeing uh, <laughs> seeing what I was talking about. So auto, there we go. Yeah, that works. Okay, much, much better. So let me go back to that head. Come back here, and then right about here, his head's gonna return back to normal. He's, his neck does this kind of lurchy thing. Uh, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm gonna go fix that in another pass. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of trying to get back to the original motion capture the best I can. I'm gonna do the same thing with his arm. And just so, why was the bar set up breaking it? So Is when it because I, uh, they weren't starting from a regular idle animation? They were starting from a... Uh, no, what, uh, the keys that I'm setting, actually, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just expand this so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's my curves. These are what the uh, 
actual animation is that it's being applied to the different controls in the rig. Uh, right now, these are set to auto. There's just auto smooth. I actually had them set to stepped, which is like a stair step. And they're, he's just going to rigidly pop from pose to pose. And I didn't want that. Uh, I do want that when I was blocking out all my bartender animations. But I'm going to put that back to auto. Oh, and I... <laughs> Motion Builder is super unforgiving when it comes to uh, time. Moving things around. There we go. Well, they, we just lost a sponsor. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Star Citizen Live has no sponsors. Other than you, the Star Citizen subscriber. <laughs> All right, so I got his uh, arm in there. His hand is kind of going up. I'm going to check his balance to see if balance is off. Uh, as an animator, I, we tend to sit back and we tend to like watch our animations just play over and over again mm -hmm. uh, and evaluate it, look for any little pops or hitches that we may see. Like he's his, his got a little wrist problem going on there. Uh, probably from like a flipped marker, a stray marker, possibly. Uh, one of the uh, questions in the chat, obviously this was uh, recorded uh, by people standing. Is, are, do you ever... Are there ways to adapt the emote to play from like a sitting standpoint? Like if this person were sitting in a chair and wanted to still do the, oh, you know, the sun's in my eyes? Uh, there is. We would probably want to capture it from a sit seated position because the way your body moves is a little bit different. In fact, I have some seated animations here. I can swap over to, I believe, let's see, sitting. So here's the face palm sitting. So we can, we can actually sit here and we can evaluate between these two animations to see kind of difference. So with the sitting, he kind of like leans over and he does kind of the <laughs> Picard-esque kind of uh, face palm. Hand doesn't quite make contact, but you can kind of see how he's leaning over in the this, in this seated position. If I go to the standing version of it, which I was going to work on right up here somewhere, face palm standing. Uh, you can see how his uh, the core of his body actually acts and moves and postures right. different. Yeah. So uh, while in theory you could probably play an upper body animation on a sitting set of animations, uh, it's if you want that really high end fidelity of uh, motion, you probably want to actually just capture that. Got it. That so, motion so, sitting down. Yeah. So if we wanted to add. Like, so is, is, if we have, obviously we have a lot of emotes that can be performed while standing. Uh, if we wanted to have versions of those emotes that played while sitting, rather than adapt those, we would probably just recapture them from a sitting perspective to get all that natural uh, nuance that comes from when people sit. Exactly. Okay. So I think I'm at a point right now where I can just go ahead and plot down to skeleton. So I'll do that. And what I'm, what I'm doing again is I'm just baking this down to my control rig. Uh, these are just iterative passes that we do, and it just it makes editing motion you know much easier. So the next thing I think I'm going to concentrate on is I'm going to do his neck fix. So if you remember, his neck kind of lurched forward like that as he kind of like <laughs> uh, not quite what we're looking for. So we have a little thing we call a neck fix. We have a script that runs it, but I'll I'm just going to do it by hand. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go back to my split screen. This is how I like to work so I can just grab nodes really fast. So I'm going to grab all of his neck nodes and I'm going to go to my rotation channel in my base, la uh, base animation layer. I'm going to select everything and I'm just going to flatten it. And I'm Technically, I'm killing all the motion in that neck. And if, if I look at this now, you can see there's no motion on his neck. And you're probably saying, hey, Brian, how do you get that animation back onto his head? And, well, the animation is still there on the, what I've zeroed out is the curves on the, on the FK. That stands for forward kinematics. The curves on the IK, the inverse kinematics, are still on his head. So there's the curves there. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn that back on. You can see his head's actually turning because uh, it's going back into that motion. And now I've got a much nicer, a much nicer read on that head and neck. There's a little pop there. I don't know if you noticed that. There's a little hitch there. That'll be something that I'd want to probably stomp and fix. It's probably right here. It's probably just a little spike in the motion capture. Uh, like Again, it happens. 
little spikes. It's really simple. I just come in here. I'll just, I'll just cut that out <clears throat> like that. There, no little pop in the head. Pop in the head is now gone. So I'm going to call that a pass. Plot, skeleton, <laughs> plot, there's, control rig. There's actually quite a few similarities in this process between this and audio mixing. <laughs> I bet there is. Uh, on, on the screen that you have on the right with all the, the flow graph stuff, uh, you, you've spotlighted the, the, the one section that was for the neck. Can you just give us a, a rundown, since we've been looking at this flow graph for a while, what these sections are? Sure. So uh, this control rig in Motion Builder, and this is why the control rig in Motion Builder is so powerful, is it has an IK and an FK rig built into it. Everything that you see in yellow, it's pretty much this whole tree hierarchy. This is your um, FK skeleton. Uh, this is your spine. You can kind of see it. If you think about this, this is kind of like a person, right? Spot, here's his hips, spine, shoulders, down into his hands. I usually color code these fingers so I know that they're fingers, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak. Uh, here's his legs right over here. Uh, and then right over on this side are his, is his neck and his head. He has. We actually have two neck joints in our character. Over here in the red and blue spheres, I'm going to x-ray him so you can actually see what I'm looking at. So again, here's the, here's the FK. Mm -hmm. Got it highlighted. Now all the red and blue spheres, these are the IK. And these are two, in, they're kind of like two separate rigs that have a symbiotic relationship with each other. Uh, they, they work with each other really, you know, really nicely. And you can go easily go back and forth between IK and FK. Uh, a lot of programs, uh, a lot of rigs, you have a IK snapping and they have to do all sorts of code and, and scripting in order to prevent that kind of snapping. But uh, because this is all programmatic, it, it, it's all built into the rigging. And what's I what's uh, IK and uh, uh, what was the other one FK F FK IK stands for inverse kinematics and I can show you real simply uh, what that is all about. Let me go to a new take. So IK or FK, I'm sorry, <laughs> FK. So uh, to get FK to work, I'm going to have to rotate my arm up. Let's say he's going to like point at something. Then I got to go select my elbow and I got to bend at the elbow and then I got to select the hand and get the hand into position. And that's how I'd have to animate the entire character. And then one day, somebody got the idea of being able to create an inverse kinematic chain. And what that does is it allows me to grab the end of a chain of joints and drag it around, <laughs> making it much, much easier to kind of like drag and rotate and, and point or grab onto something. And this, uh, I'm, I'm old enough to, <laughs> to remember what it was like pre-IK, yeah. and uh, IK has made animation in 3D so much easier, so much nicer. Yeah, it's, I, I was, like I said, my only experience in this was with stop motion claymation stuff, and I'm just, I'm watching this whole time going, I'm really glad I didn't stick in that business. <laughs> but, it's just... Yeah, and one of the things that, again, with this, uh, with Motion Builder, see if I can do this, uh, <laughs> Uh, speaking of IK and FK, like right now we're, we're like looking at the arm, right? Uh -huh. Well, uh, we have built in full body IK. So that means if I grab his arm and start pulling him, it'll actually pull him down to the ground, which is pretty cool. I have to say, you can see his feet are like trying to stick to the floor, <laughs> but not quite. Wow. If you try, can you, can you lift him off the floor? Or does he just stretch or like, is, is there an upper well, limit? If I am, if I'm dragging him by his hand, you th that's kind of what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> if I grab him by his hips, you can see I can I can probably move him around a little bit I, more freely. That's mainly because uh, I have pinning turned off. If I turn pinning back on, okay. his feet are pinned to the floor. I can uh -huh. I can just move him around like so. I, I, so. I, I need you to play with this a little bit. Grab a leg, gra gra grab All his right. left leg and pull it out. Sorry. Uh, this is, <laughs> that's his right leg. There you go, left leg. Now, I, I live in West L.A., so I, I see this in, like, yoga studios. This is <laughs> common. There you can uh, stay alive. I'm glad you got my subtle, my subtle thing where I wanted you to go with that, Brian. I'm really glad I didn't have to be the one to spell that out. All right. You may continue. I may continue. All right, so where were we were shading, shading the eyes? All right, yeah. All right, so he's holding his uh, 
holding his hand up to shade his eyes. So we just fixed the neck. Uh, this is probably the time we come in and start playing with the hands and the fingers. His right hand really isn't doing too much. It's his left hand that's really doing all the work. So I'm going to go over to my pose controls, probably because I'm going to be making a few poses here. Uh, go up, I'm going to grab his fingers. And I'm going to set my zero key. Zero key meaning that it, the base layer, which is the actual animation curves. See it right there? Base. Uh, is set, so I'm reading that. Go to my body part mode, so make sure I'm only keying the fingers. And as he comes up, he's going to shade his eyes. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start playing with his hand and his eyes. There are things that we have to think about when doing any animation in our game. Because we have this big open universe where, where you can wear helmets and all sorts of different outfits and armor and that sort of thing, Sometimes we have to animate to the lowest common denominator. So, for example, when he shades his eyes right here, if I come up here and I key his hand to come up here and actually look a little more realistic to where he's like shading his eyes like so, chances are his hand is going to go into a helmet. But at the same token, if he is wearing a big helmet and I animate his hand out here somewhere, it'd probably look a little weird if he wasn't wearing a helmet. So until we get a tech that allows us to be able to detect the mass of objects and apply an offset in, in game, we're going to have to kind of, you know, give split a little, take a little. Yeah, split the difference. Maybe his hand may clip into some helmets, uh, but not other helmets, or, but it's not too far away from his head. So actually, I'm going to set a key right there on his arm, because actually, I kind of like where it's at right there. Uh, that shading the eyes, I think I liked where it was at before, so I'm going to set a zero key right there. So he's like, oh, I can't see. Uh, this also being a player animation, let me flip over here. I've got to concentrate on what is the player seeing. So I'm just going to raise that hand up a little bit because we don't want to cover too much of the player's view. Uh, this is action safe, title safe, uh, and that's just kind of a way for us to help frame what we're looking at. So I'll just go set it. Go ahead and set a key right there. Now we have animations that play, obviously, that in reaction to physical stimuli, like in, in the universe, things it, it, things impact your character and your like ragdoll and stuff like that. Somebody in the chat was was asking if something like this could could, could conceivably trigger automatically if like you were like facing a big explosion in close proximity and your character automatically goes. Ah. I don't see why not. I think you guys should talk to design and see if they can hook something like that up. Uh, I'm sure design doesn't like me. Brewer right now. who said that, not me. <laughs> I'm sure design doesn't like me right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got his I've got his hand kind of am going where I want it to go. He's like right here. Let's get back to those fingers. So these are his fingers right there. So um, one of the things you have to think about when you animate, even if you're doing motion captures, you have to think about the, the 12 principles of animation. Oh, yeah. And one of, the 12, yeah, one of the 12 principles of animation is strong posing. Um, you can take something that's been naturally captured and you can make it much, much stronger. In fact, I'll give you, let me switch back over to my camera here. I'll give you an example. We were working on the deck crew sequence, right? And when the guy went down to be the jet blast deflector, he kind of went like this. It's like, uh... <laughs> Let's see if I try not to pull my the cord. He goes uh, like this, and then when I went in and we did some motion editing, we took it and we kind of like stretched him out like this. So as he hit that pose, it was like boom, dynamic. So these are little things that we can do to um, enhance the natural motion and and uh, everything. And it's I I personally think it's very important. There are kind of two camps in motion capture. Um, Actually, let me, let me rephrase that. There, there are two camps in animation. Well, three camps. Three camps. There are three camps in animation. You have the, the purest, hand key only, motion capture is the devil's rotoscope. And then you have motion capture purists, where um, if, it do, if, if it doesn't work, mm -hmm. you have to reshoot it. And you reshoot it and reshoot it until it does work, because hand keying is, is you know, <laughs> that, that... not... That's, not acceptable. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, the claymation yeah. stuff is and then, key. Yes, and and then then there's the people like me who are right in the middle, where it's like, 
motion, I believe motion capture gets you most of the way there, but then you add that last 25, 35% onto it with, with your hands and, uh, and, uh, it, it brings your motion capture to life. So, all right. So fingers. So we're going to go up here and we're going to start posing these fingers uh, because these are, this is interesting. People might find this interesting. Um, in the hands, when we built these hands, I helped design design these hands way, way back in the day. And one of the things I had them include in the hand are cupping joints because these are both first person and uh, third person models. So we need to be able to have that fidelity. So we have these cupping joints. So if I want to kind of like bring these joints down, I can do that and kind of get this nice cupping feature in his hands. But anyways, I, th I thought I'd just point that out. <laughs> so. So anyways, let's let's get his fingers straightened up here. Like so. Like so. So when you're posing the fingers, you have to think about how fingers group. Fingers actually kind of group together. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh, here's another cool thing. Remember I was saying IKFK? I can grab any one of his finger joints and move it around with IK. A lot of rigs, you're only allowed to use FK apparently. So uh, typically, these these three fingers actually group together: the pinky, the ring, and the middle. So a lot of times you'll see this is this is kind of how we'll pose pose our hand. And then out of these three fingers, these two fingers will group together. And a lot of times this this little finger will go out this way. And if you ever look at Spider-Man comics. That's exactly what Spider-Man does. He's he does this a lot, or when he's like swinging on his web. Um, Z. <laughs> can you do you'll, a, you'll, you'll can you see do, this. Can you do a Vulcan you'll, greeting? Oh, we can't do a Vulcan greeting. So, but yeah, like Spider-Man, you can you'll you'll see Spider-Man doing this pose a lot, right? Let me do that Vulcan greeting. There we go. Not perfect, but it gets the uh, <laughs> the point across. <laughs> let me uh, let me kind of get these fingers back over here. So he kind of like shields his eye. Bionukes, I saw that, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Continue. <laughs> You'll have to share with me later what uh, <laughs> what his comment was. All right, so get those fingers and hands keyed. All right. So you kind of can come up like this and hit that pose. Maybe, maybe his hand will curl in just a little bit, like so. Bring in these cupping joints just a little bit. You can see he's got a little bit of noise on his fingers. This is from the motion capture. I'm going to go in later. I'm going to cut all that out once I kind of get the the main. Actually, I think I'm going to cut it out now. It's kind of bugging me. Yeah. 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 Let, me, let me go do this. Uh, let's see, uh, let's go to my F curves. Let's go to my base animation layer. Yeah, you can, you can kind of, well, I can see it. I can see where the curves are being all silly to right there. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to cut that out. Like, you're like Sean Tracy looking at the raw matrix. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm not getting that weirdness in his hands anymore. So I'm just going to head back over to my animation layer and continue posing. So here, and then he's going to go from here, set a key, and go over to here where he's going to actually have more of a salute. So where I'm going to actually bring these fingers back together. Uh, for those of you who have joined us later in the broadcast, we are doing animation data solving for emotes that were created and directed by backers at our uh, CitizenCon 2948 event last year. Uh, this one specifically is shielding your eyes from a bright light source of some sort. Uh, 
I like this pose, but I think I'm going to copy that pose. I, my my big head is hiding it, but trust me, I've I've created a pose mm-hmm. for those fingers. I'm going to come up over this way. You can you can kind of see what his fingers are doing, kind of dancing around. I'm going to come here. I'm going to paste that pose just on those fingers. Set a key. I don't like it there either. I'm going to paste the pose. I actually liked when the fingers danced a little bit. You'll you'll still see the dancing. The reason why I'm pasting poses right here instead of um, going in and cutting keys like I did before mm-hmm. is the kind of the wiggling around is kind of nice, but I don't want them to be too much. Yeah. Then he's going to kind of splay his hand out a little bit, which I kind of like. It's not too bad. I'll I'll check that pose for those fingers. And really, a lot of your time can actually be spent just editing finger data. Do that. Maybe put this finger out just a little bit. Maybe drop this pinky down just to kind of give it some personality. Then as he drops his hand, he's going to go back to his original position, which is which is that. So I pasted a pose. And you can see his fingers want to get mangled <laughs> up again. <laughs> so I'm going to go here. I'm going to go fix that. You can see this big drop here in the curves. So that's that's where the, the data kind of got mangled up a little bit. Now, the, is that drop there, is that in the original capture data, or is that because of the changes that you've been making, it's changed the curve? It's in the actual uh, capture data. Chances are the uh, marker floated off or got swapped or something, something along those lines, or maybe there's just a little bit of noise on it. So we're going to go in and we're just going to, I'm just going to clean that up, that little ugly part up. And bring him back. Bring that back down. Yeah, there's there's quite a few parallels between this and audio mixing. Like like that that would that would be the equivalent of like in, when uh, editing somebody's vocals of cutting out an unfortunate like breath. Like they they they, they took a breath there or had an unfortunate exhale there. You you'd cut that from the from yeah. the lyric track. So now that Very his clean. hand is yeah now that his hand is is going to come down. It's going to hit. I'm going to add a little bit of flexing onto that hand. So as it comes down, he's going to, I think I'm going to curl his fingers up here. Again, this this is experimental. This is playing. There's no, this is how you do this. A lot of, a lot of it, this animation is trying trying things out to see how it works. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to curl so, the so fingers So there's a lot down. of game design. <laughs> Let's we'll see how that works. I'm going to expand his fingers out so it kind of hits. And then curls back in a little bit. I think it's not curling in quick enough. I think it's, it, it's yeah, okay. it's just a little bit of that extra. Yeah, I think if anything, we've already learned that just pointing the cameras at somebody and recording them doing it, you know, gets us a, 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 a pretty deep along in the process. But it, it's it's not all that you need. You definitely need to come in here and not just solve the data, cutting out the bits that you know where the, where the curves are down or whatever. But you still add quite a bit of art to the process here. Oh, definitely, definitely. It, there is there, there's a reason why they call it um, call us like motion editors because we're really going in and we're motion editing this using principles of animation. So I think that's good for now. Let me plot this down. Plot to skeleton. No. Plot to control rig, and I I would move on to the next one. So. Is there any requests that we should do? I got face palm, quick draw, wag finger, cuckoo. Let's do face palm, but don't face put it palm. to these people. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have a question, though. Um, when in, in other editing, like nonlinear editing, film editing, or music editing, or uh, stuff like that, uh, oftentimes they'll combine elements of different takes. Like this part of this take was great. But we like, we like the first part of this take, but we like the middle part of this take, and the, the end of this take was the best. And in film production, you often can now combine takes to, to make it look like one seamless performance. Do you ever do that with, with animations? Uh, we have, absolutely. A lot of times we will film something specifically in, in parts because maybe it's impractical or we don't want to kill our actor on stage doing these things. So we say, all right, 
this one you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna jump from this little platform mm -hmm. onto the ground. They do it. Uh, then we're gonna say we're gonna bring you up a little bit higher. We're gonna do the same kind of jump, but we're gonna let you when you hit the ground, you're gonna have this big impact. So then they do a big impact, right? Then we take the element of of jumping down and the element of impact, and then uh, if we have to put a predetermined height on it, we'll put we'll we'll raise that character up however high in the air it needs the character needs to be let them drop and then we'll then stitch those three elements together to make one element of a, a character jumping off and landing on the floor and, mm -hmm. and if let's say if it's a superhero game and he's jumping off a building i don't think my actor wants me to have him jump off an actual building to <laughs> hit the ground um so uh for something so yeah, as, as short like an emote though would you would you ever combine takes between emotes or you just look for one that gets you most of the way and then do your editing and then just do your solving after that Typically, we would try to use the emote in its entirety, but I'm going to give a for example. For example, let's say uh, the data came back, and see how he has this nice swing in his arm like that. So, so and this is this has happened a lot. It'll come, and the data will come back, and it'll do this. And oh, let me <laughs> not turn on. Uh, Turn, let me turn that off. All right, and he goes shunk, and he'll just he'll just lock right there, right. or right here, and it looks bad because you don't have that settle in it. Just feels, and if I try to motion edit that, it would it wouldn't feel so good. So uh, we'll maybe, but there may be another take where he does have a bit of an arm swing that works with it. So we'll kind of like piece in and motion edit in uh, the ending of one animation onto this to kind of finish it out to kind of make it feel nice. So, all right, so here we go. Got him, he's standing here. First thing, what's the first thing? Do you remember? Remember what the first thing is that I need to do? Full body mode. I'm gonna paste the home pose onto him and set my key. I didn't know there'd be a quiz. There's always a quiz. If you ever watch me when I do my show, I'm always teaching. Teach, teach, teach. Yeah, let's, let's, let's make a point of that, actually. Now, Brian, I mean, the, the, well, not the reason why we're doing this show, but you actually uh, stream personally on your own Twitch channel uh, where, you, where you do a lot of this type of stuff, not Star Citizen game related, but uh, personal projects. Yeah, well, you know, I, uh, I grab assets uh, from years gone by from very old projects I worked on, you know, a decade plus ago. And I, uh, I teach motion builder. I teach motion editing. Uh, I show what I know. There's a lot of different ways to do the same thing inside a motion builder. Uh, gets you the same end result a lot of the time, and I just kind of show my workflow. That's and right. uh, yeah, it's, well, it's fun. I, I like talking to people. And we won't be so crass as to promote ourselves, but I know there are some people in the chat that already know it. If they want to share the link, and you guys want to do that, that way nobody can accuse me of <laughs> of hawking for Brian's thing. There you go. All right. So what are we doing? All right, so uh, I have put his pose on. He's going, oh man, and he's doing that. No, paste my other pose. Here, let me let me do that again, so you can get a little bit closer on this guy, so you can see what he's doing. So he ends, and I'm gonna paste that pose on him. You can see that a little bit of a pop there. I'm gonna go adjust his arm. So he's kind of come up here, and again, uh, this is uh, what if he's wearing a helmet situation, right? How, how are we going to handle this? Jump, 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 and zero. Body part mode and zero. I talk to myself a lot, just in case you haven't noticed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, face palm. So I got back to the original animation right before he drops it. Can, zero that out again can we uh we've only got about 15 minutes left for the purpose of this broadcast can we uh, work on it as if this is not going to be for a helmet and, and and see how you would how you would put it as close to the face and sure so what i would do is i come up here like like so grab his hand using that ik that we talked about it's that red red sphere right there in his wrist and i go like that I'm going to take that key, I'm going to copy that key, paste it down here, 
You know, it didn't look like anything happened, but it did. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I copy this key from here to right there. And then he's going to drop his hand. I'm going to go one step further on this. I'm going to actually put in an auxiliary effector. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to... It's an extension of the control rig. It's this little, this little box I just created around his wrist. Uh, this is now... This box is now driving his wrist. But there's no animation on the box. Because I just created it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to parent it to his head. Like so. Now his head is driving it. So now the head is actually driving driving the hand a little bit. I don't want it to be completely glued to his, his head. I want to turn down the rotation just a little bit. Maybe turn down the translation just a little bit. So it's mostly going to stick to his head. <laughs> uh, what I have to do now is I have to go turn this thing on and off. So I'm going to key it there. These are the on positions. Come here. I'm going to key it off. It's going to look ugly at first. Trust. Uh, don't worry. I know what I'm doing, usually. Set a little key here. So this is my offset key here. I got my zero key down here still. And I got my other zero key there. So I'm going to just move my other zero key back to there. So we face palms, you can see his head is now kind of driving his hand. It kind of gives the effect of it sticking a little bit. I am kind of working in a fast forward mode here. Mm -hmm. I'd probably want to come in here and I'd want to actually smooth his head out just a little bit so it's not so jittery. So I, I'd do that in a base animation layer. I feel like when I face palm, the, the palm is more over the lower part of my face. Like, like I, you can actually kind of see my finger, my eyes through the fingers. See your eyes through your fingers? That would definitely be like a director's call. So if uh, Steve Bender came up and was like, hey, I want to see his eyes through his fingers, or, or however uh, he decides he wants to see it, uh, we'd make those uh, necessary adjustments. So let me, let me show you a filter. So again, my, my big head is like covering it up. There's filters down here <laughs> that uh, smooth. This is the same problem I have whenever I stream. It's like I want to show stuff, but I, there's never enough real estate. So smooth preview and accept. Right. So I smooth out his head just a little bit. You don't know it right now, but you're actually making the new mascot for Star Citizen Live. <laughs> I am. Well, maybe not Star Citizen Live, maybe holiday, holiday live stream 2017. Holiday live 2017. Wait, did you say 2017? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's taken me two years to be able to talk about it. This is personal character <laughs> growth. Let's set at his fingers to actually like feel like there's contact with his with his face. I am going to cry for a few minutes after the end of this show, though, because I brought it up. There we go. I, I'm getting it. I yeah. probably, if, if I wasn't doing this live, I'd probably spend a little more time just oh, finagling yeah. Oh, yeah. things. Now that, that's what you're doing exactly what I wanted you. I wanted to see just how granular we could get with, you know, if we didn't have the restriction, how, different size helmets and everything, if, if, if this was just for this guy, just for today. Yeah, let's say you went up to a mission giver and you really annoyed him and he face palmed himself. Right. <laughs> this is exactly how we would do it. Yeah. There. His fingers there. And I'd probably add a little, I'd embellish the fingers a little bit. Like maybe right here, I'd flare them out. Again, I'm, I'm experimenting. I love to experiment and figure. Figure out how I can push things. I wish we had some like sad piano music to be playing right now. I want the uh, theme to the the Hulk. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So again, it's it's uh, back to principles of animation timing. 
principle of animation. So it's coming in here and figuring out the timing of when to get his hand to hit, when to get it to, like, I think this might be off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to adjust. Sometimes all you need to do is adjust a key a single frame, and all of a sudden the, the timing works. A lot of times when we're animating, we'll actually come down and we'll say, we just want to concentrate on this this little section. So we'll just play this one over and over again. Let yeah. me uh, set that back to loop. Yeah, it looks like he's stabbing his thumb through the side of his head, through his temple for a little bit there. Just a... it, it probably is. Yeah. This We've would be one of those... that sometimes. Oh, I always stab myself with my thumb. So as, as he comes over here, he's probably going to... Probably animated out. I would adjust it. I would. I kind of go throughout the entire animation and just kind of yeah. figure out how his fingers. Like you can see, his other fingers are actually pulling up off of his head. <laughs> and part of it is because I've the settings that I put onto my uh, my auxiliary effector here is to help keep some of that rotation fidelity. And so you have to add fidelity and uh, fidelity in other places. And in this case, would be the fingers. I said fidelity twice in a row. Fidelity, fidelity. Or his finger. There we go. When I when I grab fingers, I like to grab them from here, uh, the end finger, because it, it's a real easy way of like getting his finger to go where I want it, and then I can like just rotate the tip of it. So if his, he was putting his hands, let's say, down onto a table, it's a real easy way of, of getting his fingers to make contact and then give the illusion of him pressing down onto like a table or a flat surface. And then if I want to do it the other way, the IK or the FK way, IK, the IK way. <laughs> no, FK, FK, the FK way. I, 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 uh, I Sorry. Forward kinematics, you're moving forward, forward down the chain. So there. Oh, there we go. It's probably gonna be a pop here, but it's okay. It's all good. A little bit of a pop. No, I, I'm I'm relating to this emote probably more than most emotes ever done because it's not just the, the face palm. It's that he does this little massage of his temples at the same time. It's like <laughs> yes. I find myself relating to this emote more than I expected to. I, I do like this emote. I tell you, it's one of the ones I can't wait to do. Let me go over here. Is is the quick draw? Of course, he's going to look really silly because his hand. Guess what? <laughs> you know what's happening? You know what's happening here? Hmm. Pop quiz. I still got the I, this. Uh, because you have the hand attached like to the head. Yeah, let me let me turn that off. This is this is going to be one of those uh, hand jobs. I mean, finger jobs that. Uh, <laughs> to, to fix these figures from being uh, so crazy. <laughs> the views and opinions expressed by Brian Brewer do not represent those of Clad Imperium Games, Robert's Space Industries, or its subsidiaries. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just, I'm just talking about finger animation. <laughs> uh, I think everybody in this office is... Uh... <laughs> You're getting good with the cuts, JJ. <laughs> you're, you're a JJ on the spot with that one. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. Before can I, can I can I replay this on my uh, <laughs> my stream one night? Yeah. Just uh, it'll be, it'll be up episode. on YouTube later today. Um, yeah. Can we go back to the? Is it possible to get a, to get a a really good screenshot of the of the uh, the face palm one that we did? Sure. Before before we before we take off, can we? Yeah, let me do this for you. Make his window large. There we go. There we go. Usually when I have somebody on here to create something, um, they end up making this, but they make me do this. So now we actually have somebody making this. So yeah, so it's, it's getting close to the face. You, you had a good pro profile shot earlier. It's getting real close to the face, to the other side from, from his other profile. So we, there we go. And, and bring that in the yeah. There we go. It's getting even closer if we can. Now I'm directing. I'm the director now. There we go. Let's see what he looks like first person. 
<laughs> I'm looking in his wrist. Yeah. <laughs> so there's still some work to do. Yeah, there, this is the challenge of uh, our system of having camera and head, right? Animations, yeah. So. Okay. Can, can we get it really close to the head? Just like fill the frame. There we go. There we go. We'll just let that play for a little bit. So the guy that we're looking at here, I was actually at the body scanning session where we actually scanned this guy in. M move the, and, move the uh, mouse off. Move the mouse off. Let's get this clean. There we go. There we go. <laughs> no, th this, is, this is for all you Twitch broadcasters out there. You can clip this. You're welcome. Don't say Disco never gives you anything. Continue, Brian. Oh, I, I'm, I'm good. I was going to say I, I was there when we uh, body scanned this guy. Um, yeah. He's real nice. Uh, the uh, model that we brought in is a real nice guy. Cool. All right, Brian. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, this was great. Yeah. You, 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 did, yes. you did everything I, I, I wanted you to do. You, you presented your information well. There were many comments throughout the show about what an effective teacher Brian Brewer was. So, Well, I, you yes. flatter me, good sir. I, I thought you were okay. I mean, I'm, I'm sharing their sentiment. You were, you were just fine for me, but no, you're fine. Um, that's it for this week's show, guys. We had a couple things going on. Uh, obviously, the promotion for the Tumble Ranger launched in earnest today. Uh, that's our new uh, motorcycle. Uh, that being added to Star Citizen. You can find out all about that on robertspaceindustries.com. Uh, additionally, we uh, announced the save the date for this year's CitizenCon, which, was, which is being held in Manchester, United Kingdom, in November of, of this year. A change to uh, CitizenCon's past that were traditionally in October. Um, this year's in November, so, so if, you're, if you're booking your, your trip to Manchester to go to CitizenCon this year, be sure you check the save the date and don't show up in October. Not that Manchester isn't lovely in October. No, but I'm not going to go there. All right, Brian, thank you so much, man. Uh, I'm going to let you get back to work. And uh, to everybody else, uh, I'm Jared. That's Brian. Uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. Oh, we'll see you next thank week. Thank you. We'll see you next week for our very special subscriber event, uh, Star Citizen Live. We will have a live studio audience here in the studio uh, made up of our subscribers who make these shows possible. And I think... If you're a subscriber, there are actually two or three RSVPs still open. So if you're going to be in the Los Angeles area next Friday and you want to join us live, meet the developers in person, and maybe even have your questions asked live on the show, uh, there's still a chance for a select few of you. So check that out. That's also on the robertspaceindustries.com website. So, uh, yeah. See you next week, everybody. Fidelity. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.